City of Winona revealed its finalized capital improvement plan. We'll tell you what's in store for Winona. A local Winona company is producing and shipping thousands of Super Bowl memorabilia all across the nation. Hello and welcome to News 24. I'm Larissa Olson. And I'm Meredith Olson. With back-to-back -back victories in Florida and Nevada, Pre Republican President frontrunner Mitt Romney is looking toward the next states that hold GOP nominating contests, Colorado and Minnesota. Texas Re Representative Ron Paul was in Rochester, Chanhassen, and Arden Hills on Saturday and will be back in Minnesota to campaign on Tuesday just in time for the Minnesota Precinct Caucus. The caucus will be held on Tuesday starting at 7 p.m. Winona, Minnesota is in the beginning stages of their capital improvement plan. This initiative has made it possible for several improvements to be made, including a new fire truck and improved roads. Fire Chief Ed Crawl and Winona's Public Works Manager Keith Nelson discuss how it affects each of their departments in our community. Every year we go through a process of laying out what we think the projects will be for that year, and then we try to foresee where it's going to be over the next five or ten years. One of these projects is a new fire truck. Winona is receiving a new top-of-the-line fire truck that is replacing an older model. This is long overdue, says Crawl, and will be a great asset to the community. We do not have a scheduled or structured uh, vehicle replacement program. So basically the fire chief, the department head, has to go and ask council for approval for the funds for new apparatus. Crawl says it takes a while to get the right amount of money approved for a purchase of this size. The truck will cost close to a half a million dollars to construct. We've been asking and working on this truck probably for two to three years now. We'll be trading in a 1985 unit. Our units are, we make more runs each year and they're, they're wearing out. Road improvements for the city are also in the works. These improvements will involve County Road 32 and 17. The county is going to be overlaying a section of road which goes all the way, well, halfway across town. And the city pays for half of that because it's within the city. So that'll be a new overlay project. The capital improvement plan has made it possible for several much needed projects to move forward. In Winona, Skylar Ogren, News 24. Road construction will begin this summer. State officials say that Minnesota motorcycle ridership is at a record high level with 404,000 licensed operators in the state. Bikers' deaths account for about 10% of Minnesota's total traffic fatalities every year. Last year alone, 41 riders lost their lives. The Minnesota Motorcycle Safety Center says that the majority of the crashes resulted from rider error. Riders' Edge instructor Greg Schaub says he teaches risk awareness which we spend about a third of that in the classroom, again, talking about the, the legal aspects and proper riding gear and risk management, things like that. And the rest of the time we do spend on the range. And we ride on the range uh, pretty much regardless of the weather conditions. Protective gear like helmets and leather jackets can also keep a motorcyclist safe. Shab encourages riders to take precautions in bad weather and always drive sober. The Super Bowl is one of the biggest times of the year for both football fans and a local business. For more than 51 years, Windcraft here in Winona has made sports memorabilia. Right now, they are pushing out fresh Super Bowl merchandise. Steven Rydberg was there this morning to check out all the action. For Windcraft, the Super Bowl is the big show. It's very exciting. Windcraft creates a wide variety of products. You name it, they make it. We have our lanyards keychains, we have wood signs now, we've expanded into a home decor department as well. Most popular item, pennants. They even create the towels players use on the field. The whole process starts five months in advance, beginning with the graphic design department. The designs can change as many as three to five times as the NFL season progresses. We start taking all of the teams that look like they're headed towards the playoffs. When the playoffs start, with then the, real, the scramble really happens and we have to kind of like um, set up scenarios with all different uh, teams. As those lose, we eliminate that art, and as we get closer and closer to the big games for the NFC and AFC champ, those are the graphics that move through and we start producing and putting graphics together for either of those teams winning the Super Bowl. Once the art is approved by all parties, it's sent to the manufacturing floor. 
The manufacturers were hard to work the second the Giants won. They've been working all through the night to get these products out the door and to retailers across the nation. Memorabilia has been produced by the thousands, and the first shipment left the floor as early as 4 in the morning, creating a sense of accomplishment amongst the manufacturers. I think it's great. It gives us a job, and it gives everybody a little bit of um, something to hang on to as a memorance of the game. The big show is nearly over for Windcraft, but some Giants fan out there continues to wave their victory flag. In Winona, Steven Rydberg, News 24. The first products will show up at retailers late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Winona State University has received a $6,000 grant for its Watkins Art Collection. The Minnesota Historical Society gave the grant to help preserve the 300 pieces of artwork. The money will be used to bring a conservatory to document the artwork and give recommendations on restoration and storage. Winona State's Art Administrator Kathy Peterson says the grant can help create more awareness to the collection. It's part of the Winona State heritage and um, I'm really excited to start to pay a little more attention to the, maybe heighten the visibility of the collection on campus and um, care for some of the pieces that probably need um, some restoration and, and cleaning. The conservator plans to examine the collection over two days. This is expected to happen in a couple of weeks. A Winona State University assistant professor purchased a hidden treasure at an auction in La Crosse. This hidden treasure was a box that held letters and photos from the 1800s. Assistant professor Jim Parlow started his investigation 13 years ago after rediscovering his purchase. The letters in the box were written by Roll Colt Gridley, a man famous for carrying a 50-pound sack of flour to raise money for Civil War soldiers on both sides. Most of the letters written by Gridley are addressed to my dear sister. Parlow says he needs to find out her relation to Gridley. Does red work? You know if that will show up at all? So I really don't know if she's a Snyder or she's a Gridley. So that part of the research has still got to go on. Also to identify, to make sure that these photographs that were actually found along with these envelopes are of maybe Gridley and his family. Even though Parlow has pieced together most of Gridley's life, he says there are still mysteries to be solved. For more on Gridley's story, check out the extended interview at www.youtube slash WSU News 24. The European technique of staining glass made its way through centuries of tradition to the local community. Olga Lejepakova has the story. Through its 1,000 year history, stainless glass has been used in churches and cathedrals all over the world. But there's no need to travel far to see how the stained glass is made. You can see it right here in Winona. Cathedral Crafts is a local business that has been making stained glass for more than 40 years. President Eric Penick says they have been using the same ancient technique of stained glass making, but with a few improvements. We paint, the way we fire in our kilns is all better. It's all done better now. Um, but as far as putting a window together with lead, is the same as it was back then. Today, Cathedral Crafts work in about 20 states. The craftsmen travel all over the U.S. working on restoration projects as well as new stained glass placements. Craftsman Tony Loren says to him it's much more than a job. It's a connection to history. It's uh, not a lot of people get to see cathedrals from all over the country and get to experience the the intricacy of the stained glass. The process of stained glass window restoration is complex. Lorraine says the windows go through many steps before looking brand new. Pull all the windows out of the whole church or how many ever they need and then we bring them all back here and we'll take each piece apart by hand and watch each piece on both sides. We put them all back together again using all new lead came, everything's all brand new again and then we mud them together. We put a grout inside of the lead channels. Craftsman Don Jason says knowing that his hard work will bring joy to others someday makes his job even more meaningful. Thinking about people in New Jersey sitting down in their church and looking at a window that I, I sweat over and that, you know that, it, that's kind of satisfying. The restoration process takes about two weeks to complete but the legacy of cathedral crafts will live on for centuries. In Monona, I'm Olga Zipikova, News 24.
Cathedral Crafts is one of three stained glass shops located here in Winona, giving Winona the title of stained glass capital of the United States. The Minnesota Marine Art Museum has a free program called SPARK that helps people with memory loss along with their care partners. The program enhances communication and gives people a break in their normal lives. The attendees will look at and discuss about three pieces of artwork based on a theme. When looking at the art, people will be able to reflect and tell stories about their own lives. The museum's curator of education, Heather Casper, says that the program is a fun experience for participants. We have some really nice stories that are shared and um, it's just a nice chance to kind of laugh and relax and look at some amazing artworks and um, enjoy each other. The program is available the first Wednesday of every month. If you would like to know more, visit www.minnesotamarineart.org. A Catholic elementary school in Winona has indefinitely suspended a nine-year-old student for copying Michael Jackson's famous groin grab during a fundraiser. Pat Bolin, the principal of St. Stan's Elementary School, says the boy's performance of Billy Jean involved gross misconduct. Bolin says he plans to meet with the boy's family to talk about the issue. And the boy's parents say he has performed similar Michael Jackson's routines over past two years at the event. This year's performance was approved at a rehearsal before the event. With the warmer temperatures this season, most winter sports have had one very big setback. The Winona Senior High Nordic Ski Team has spent most of the season on man-made snow at St. Mary's University. With the lack of snow and sections right around the corner, head coach Tom Brandt says ski teams across the region are on a level playing field. I think as far as the uh, impact, the fact that it's statewide isn't as big an impact on us. If it's just southeastern Minnesota didn't have snow and we'd be trying to compete now next week for a section meet against teams that have been on snow all year. So uh, we've had the opportunity to be on snow as much as any of them have. The Winona Nordic Group sponsors the snowmaking with contributions from the City of Winona and St. Mary's University. Speaking of warm weather, Olga Lezhepikova is, is here in the studio to give us the weekly forecast. What does the week look like, Olga? Well, we're looking at another snowless week here in Winona. We're going to take a look at our seven-day seven newscast here on News 24. The groundhog did see his shadow last week, which means that we're in for six more weeks of winter. But the forecast for this upcoming week looks a lot more promising. The temperatures will be closer to an early spring weather. Today we have a high near 44 with partial sunshine. Tonight the temperatures will drop to the low of 24 with scattered flurries. On Tuesday afternoon the temperature will stay in the 20s with a high of 26. Tuesday night, the temperature will drop to a low of 15. On Wednesday, it's supposed to be mostly sunny with a high near 27. Wednesday night will be mostly cloudy with a low around 19. And starting Thursday, the temperature will rise again to mid-30s with a high of 35 and partial sunshine. Friday will be cooler with a high near 21 during the day and a low around 10 at night. The weekend temperature will fluctuate between 20s and mid-30s with a high of 26 on Saturday and partially sunny with a high near 35 on Sunday. Enjoy another week without snow and warm temperatures. That's it for the weather forecast. It was brought to you by the National Weather Service. Back to you, Meredith and Larissa. Thanks, Olga. Well, it's Think Pink Month here on the Winona State campus. And two of the leaders involved in the project are with us in the studio. Coming up next. 